In this final lesson on the four-part series of the basics of algorithm design, we are going to take the for loop that we used in the previous lesson, which is right here, and we are going to look at all of the iterations, not just the first. So first of all, let me go ahead and expand this so that we're only looking at the for loop. All right, so let's do the first iteration. We're going to go through here line by line and we're going to say, okay, here we are, day i is equal to date i plus 6. In the first iteration, i is going to be set to 0. So we know that this is going to be day 0 is date 6. And then we can see that month 0 is going to be date 4 and year 0 is going to be date 0 and that takes care of the first iteration. Alright, so here we are. Now looking at the for loop itself and having written out the first iteration, now it's time to determine the second iteration. And the first question to consider when you're advancing from one iteration to the next is this. What variables have changed and how? So in the first iteration we start with the variable i which was set to zero. In the second iteration, because we're going to be incrementing i, that means for the second iteration, i is going to be set to 1. So now we have to determine how the second iteration is going to be different from the first. Well, because i is equal to 1, i is still going to be less than 2, which means these two lines of code are still going to execute. And, of course, this line of code is still going to execute. And so for the second iteration, this is what we have. Now we can just simply change i to 1. Now we can evaluate these simple addition statements. And now immediately you can, you can notice a pattern here. Each of these numbers simply goes up by 1. Now at this point, because at the end of the second iteration we're going to have an incrementing operation on i, that means that i is going to be set equal to 2. And so because 2 is not less than 2, these lines of code are not going to execute anymore. However, this line of code will execute. So for our third iteration, i will be set to 2, and we're going to have this. And last, for our fourth iteration, we're going to have i equal to 3. And there you go. So these eight lines of code are what this for loop expands into. And what we're basically saying here is set the first character of day equal to the seventh character of date the first character of month to the fifth character of date and so on. Now if we look at our strings of text we have our date and we have day, month, and year as separate strings of text. So to start with date looks like this and day is in effect not set, month is not set, and year is not set. Now remember that whenever you have an array, you always start counting at zero. So the first element in the array is actually element number zero. So what I'm going to do is, just in order to keep track of this, I'm going to specify the character position for each of these arrays. Now it'll be easier to see how this algorithm works. So first we t we're setting day 0 equal to date 6. Date 6 is right here and day 0 is right there. Then we're saying month 0 to date 4 which is right here and year 0 to date 0 which is right here. Then we're doing the same thing for day 1, month 1, and year 1. So day 1 is here month one is here and year one 
is here. Now we're done with day and month. That's why we have the if statement that says if i is less than 2. That ensures that we are only going to take care of two characters for day and month and then we're just left with the last two characters for year. And so now we're going to set like so. And that's how it works. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing but while looking at the for loop instead of all of the code expanded. Alright, so here we are. Now we're looking at the original for loop. Now let's go through it line by line and see what happens. So first of all, i is equal to zero. So we're saying day zero, that's right here, is going to be set to day zero plus six, which is right here. Month zero, date four. Month zero is here, and date four is here. and year zero to date zero then we're done with the first iteration now i has incremented because of this so i is going to be one greater so i is no longer set to zero it's set to one since one is still less than two we say day one is equal to date seven because one plus six is seven so day one that's right here and date 7 is right here. Month 1, date 5. And year 1, date 1. Now we've reached the end of the loop. I will increment i is no longer less than 2 because i is equal to 2 and so that means these lines of code no longer execute and we're just left for the last two iterations to work with the year so here we go so year 2 is date 2 and year 3 is date 3 And there you go. So in this lesson I've shown you how you can take what looks like a more complex algorithm and break it down into a way that you can understand it and see exactly what it's doing. Now this is a critical skill to have. You need to be able to look at algorithms in source code and understand how they work. So the rules of thumb, number one, whenever a loop executes the first time as long as you know that the loop is going to execute, you can imagine that the looping code in effect doesn't exist because you know it's going to execute the first time. And then as long as you know what the initial values are, you can evaluate any conditional statements in order to know what the first iteration is going to look like. We know i is equal to zero and so we can just simply change everything to zero. Whenever you have an array and you're looking at that array element index 0, you know that that's the first element of the array. So whenever you see something that looks like this, you should say in your mind the first element of day is going to be set to, in effect, the seventh element of date. So logically you're saying the first character of the day is going to be set, then the month, then the year. You don't even need to worry so much about how it's happening just as long as you understand when you look at these three lines of code and you're able to say the first character of day, month, and year are being set. Then i is going to increment and then you know, okay, now it's the second character that's being set. And then you have a good idea of how the algorithm actually works. Just going back here to what we were looking at originally. So when you look at this for loop, you should be able to understand that first we're setting day and month the first and second character at that point day and month are done so we don't we don't need to execute those lines of code anymore and we're just left with the year where we have the final two characters of the year if any part of this is unclear feel free to ask questions and i hope you enjoyed this lesson